So this car, this actual car here was owned by Dean Martin. Oh, really? This was his personal car. Shoot, wow. And Excellent. I'll sit top. Be my guest. Thank you. Be my guest. Thank you very much. It would have been his steering wheel though, wouldn't it? Yep, that would have been okay, it. Okay, Dean Martin, steering wheel. Oh, oh. oh man. Yeah, look at that blink. You can imagine a few cigars. Maybe even Frank Sinatra and uh, they're sat in the passenger seat. Who knows? Unbelievable. Well, welcome to a new Dave's Classic Garage Tours V2 video. And today I'm back down at Creative Customs Idramana on the Mornington Peninsula, south of Melbourne. It's the first of my videos from there featuring overseas cars. But if you want to see some of the Australian cars they're working on, you'll find them on the original channel. There'll be a link at the end of this video. As ever, please do like, comment, subscribe and share for more videos to come. But for now, let's see what they've got in at Creative Customs. Right, well, there's something uh, something new and interesting I haven't seen on the channel before. But um, I thought it was going to be uh, Alan, uh, but in fact, it's John that's going to be showing us around. Yes, indeed. Um, thanks for... Thanks for doing this, uh, John. But, Thank um, you for coming out. Yeah, um, what have we got here? This is uh, someone I've seen familiar. Yeah, so it's a, uh, it's a very, very uh, old Rolls Royce. And uh -huh. this has come in for damage repair. And this is a Phantom 3, I believe, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, the customer wanted to kind of bring it back to its former glory. Because yeah. as these cars, you know, they go, undergo restorations all through their life. Could be one, could be two, could be three, who knows. And uh, this has had some extensive damage to the back door, right. which compared to modern cars, it's a whole different kettle of fish. I'll show you around the side where the damage is, just to so show you really. This is, uh, oh, it's a well used. It's not, you know, it's not a, um, it's not a mint Concours edition. But no, it's, a, it's um, a good driver. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. virgin on patina just yet, but it's no. a good driver for right. sure. So this Sedanka is Sedanka roof as well, that mm. one, eh? Yep. Yeah. yeah, this is it. And uh, bring it back to life. And a lot of it's aluminium yeah. compared to a lot of cars and timber. Right. Timber seems to be the uh, yeah, main material used alongside aluminium yeah. with these things. So is this something that uh, would this kind of aged car come through Creative Customs much? Uh, in the past, no, this, I believe this is a new customer um, right, okay. through word of mouth, through friends. So yeah. we have a lot of car... Uh, clubs that come through right. and they word, you know they talk word of mouth a lot of Rolls Royce BMW Bentley and uh, they talk word of mouth and get the um, get our name out there yeah, so I, th yeah. I believe this is a friend of a regular customer of ours yeah sure is this a v12 this one so this one yes this is the v12 right um, okay 760 I can say can categorically, it's only 760 of them made. Yes. Um, the, um, and the only V12 made directly by Rolls, Rolls Royce, Royce, apart from the Merlin and the Meteor. Yep. Yes, we heard that one, thank you very much. Yeah, um, The uh, aircraft engines, but these were... Yeah, it's uh, um, quite intense, and the twin distributors and everything on them is quite large compared to even, even those Jag V12s and everything. Yeah. Everything on them is so large and almost industrial. Yeah, the cars. It's really okay. quite, uh, yeah, like I say, I've been filmed at the Derby Works up uh, in Melbourne yep. um, and uh, just seen one of these that's just gone through a nut and bolt restoration. Yep. It's like quite a coincidence, uh, coincidence seeing, what seeing a lot, another one. What a lot of people find that's quite difficult with these cars doing a nut and bolt restoration, like a lot of these cars you might look around and you can get a lot of things off the shelf, yeah. even at your local auto, auto parts store with these cars, you can barely get anything. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. to do a nut and bolt restoration, it really tests your memory yeah. and tests your skill and history. I mean, is it, uh, for you as a younger guy and whatever, is it, yep. uh, is it still quite thrilling to work on something oh, like definitely. this? Oh, definitely. Most definitely, yeah, because it, it really, it puts you to the test. Because, I mean, if you restore something that's relatively modern, you know, you kind of have that luxury of, as I was saying before, being able to jump online and find yeah, parts, right. you know, yeah, yeah, of course, go for it, um, to be able to find parts quite easily. But I enjoy it because it's that challenge, you know, yeah. you might, might not be able to buy any timber trim for the insides. So you've got to make it and polish it and varnish right. it. Right. Um, so same. with that, and you as, sorry, what's your actual position? So I am uh, by trade a mechanic right. and I'm in okay. my fourth year of my apprenticeship now, just winding right. 
wind into the end of it. Cool, okay. Uh, so that's my, yeah, I've been here. I started my apprenticeship here and still going. It's lovely. Uh, this is a it. strange thing about um, creative. They actually do apprenticeships in-house here then. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Through, is it Skills uh, Invest or? Yeah, usually skills in, Skilled Invest. We try to get them out here so we can kind of, you know, show them around and work on things here directly yeah. instead of going through maybe a, a trade school. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of on-site training. And, and, and how, how does that uh, differ from going to a TAFE and uh, doing, doing so a, a TAFE college, a mechanics um, uh, Kind of like a, yeah, they, uh, they definitely have their ups and downs, both of them, but I would say, you know, if you go to a trade school, you're in a pool of other mechanics and, you know, you get to bounce ideas off each other or maybe, um, you know, a lot of the cars get donated. But when you're here, it's specific to what you're doing. Yeah. So if you have on-site training, there's not a lot of, not a lot of trade schools these days can train you in Rolls-Royce or, exactly. you know, like yeah, yeah. all these older yeah. cars. So yeah. being able to be trained on-site really just, yeah. you can get amongst all the classic and really hone in to your skill. Are they, do you find that the uh, delivery of uh, you know the, the, the skills learnt here, the colleges and, and courses now, yeah. online courses, and, and whatever, yeah. they're not teaching what are needed to work on old cars? Sadly not. No, you do, you learn, you go through everything in regard to pretty much everything that's um, generalised about cars, trade schools will touch on. Yeah. So, you know, that can be brakes, suspension, engines, yeah. all that, but that is, that's in a generic pool a lot of the time. And a lot of these cars do follow that basic, you know, you've got leaf springs and you've got diffs and they yep. still follow that, um, you know, that basic knowledge. But a lot of these cars are so specific to their own model. It's sure. uh, every, every car has their own unique yeah. Yeah. Um, factors about them and everything. Right. Nothing's okay. the same. Okay, we saw the back end, but uh, what have we got here? Tell us about it. So this is a Stutz Blackhawk. And this is a handmade vehicle, handmade in Italy. Uh, for, in Italy? In Italy, yeah, for uh, the highest of ends of people in the world. They are, a lot of people who bought them were celebrities. Right. So this car, this actual car here was owned by Dean Martin. Oh, really? This was his personal car. Shoot, wow, and excellent. when they were... What's the brand? A Stutz, right. Yeah, yes, yeah, Stutz Blackhawk. Yeah. And they are, uh, I believe I've been told they originated from the Monte Carlo. And right, yeah. they built this contraption or yeah. beauty, if you will. But this car was, I was told it was either double or triple the price of a Rolls Royce when it was new to own one of these cars. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I've and got a feeling, you know, there's a, was there a Corgi model or a Matchbox model of this? There uh, could have been like a little, little yeah. toy car. It's, um, it definitely Dean. turns heads, that's for sure. Man, Dean Martin, I, sorry, I've got to sit here at Dean Martin, sir. Yes, so this one's been converted to right-hand drive, oh my but uh, you can tell it has that celebrity status by all the gold and all the bling. Jeez, look at that. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely a head-turner, that's for sure. Can I sit inside? Be my guest, Thank you. be my guest. All right, can you type that? Yeah. Thank you very much. It would have been his steering wheel, though, wouldn't it? Yep, that would have okay, been it. Okay, Dean Martin, steering wheel. Oh, oh man! Yeah, look at that bling. You can imagine a few cigars, maybe even um, uh, Frank Sinatra, and uh, they sat in the passenger seat. Who knows? Unbelievable! It was definitely up there in the celebrity status. Yeah. Only the best of the best. A Stutz, a Black Hawk Six. Wow, mate! That's uh, that's bloody amazing. How long has it been in the country? Um, Do you know? I believe we're unsure about how long it's been in the country, but the, as the story goes, you wouldn't think you'd see many others, but no. we also deal with a second Stutz um, and it's owned by the same family. Right. Uh, that one's still left-hand drive and it was restored years ago by West Coast Customs, the oh, yeah. um, famous show. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have, we're kind of the umbrella company that Do you know who look that, after the... What, what's the interest... Uh, with that family in, in this particular car, do you, or the, the brand? I think it's just the unique factor yeah. of the car. Like, you can, as cool as Mustangs and muscle cars are, um, I think this just has that upper rarity factor. You know, you want to stand out, drive a Stutz. I think so, and you know, and, and they're a cool piece of history. 
Yeah, especially definitely. driving around where Dean Martin drove. Yeah, yeah. That's you wouldn't cool. can't have a bad day. To that door, mate. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So what was it in for? So this one is in for just a good, just some good TLC. Because uh -huh. um, much like classic cars, you know, they get driven when they can, but a lot of the time they're not used as much as our modern cars. So things perish, things go yeah. um, astray, and you know. So, so this what is going to get. Is that in there? We have this trouble with the first car, so it's a believe it to be a Chev motor, something along right. the lines of a up there between a small block Chev. Yeah. It could be a 350 Chev, but yeah. it uh, there's no identification on it to show what motor oh, it is. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's just kind of a a uh, mystery at this point. Yeah. But it's a big engine bay, and you've got the motor in there. So doing anything, you're kind of hunching over, yeah. left to right. It's a uh, yeah. Wow. It's a very cool car. Absolutely. Definitely got some bling to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And made in Italy, which is... Uh... Okay, so what do we got here? So this is, uh, I guess, the definition of a hot rod, yeah. if there were any. So this car, we believe to be, have started out life as a Ford Mercury. Right. Uh, but... As you can tell, it's gone under. It's gone under the knife for some extensive surgery. It's yeah. been chopped, and the flames and all the fun accessories. Uh, so it's a um, it's a head turner, but it's it's again one of those cars that have been restored. Uh, it's been restored years ago, so it's, it just needs a lot of TLC. Yeah. You know, yeah. it still looks the part, definitely, but it just needs a bit of loving. Rightio. Yeah. And. Uh, so hoses and all that sort of thing is pretty reasonably still. Yeah, it's reasonably still. It's still just able to be got hold of and. Yeah, exactly. But the, as you could imagine, these hot rods they were built back in the day for to make it as cool as possible for as little as possible. Right. Okay. So sometimes you know you find things that have been packed out with washers or have been built from nothing because it's just it gets you by. You know you cruise with that cool look, but in this day and age with um, the regulations and engineering. Yeah. You kind of need to just have that safety side of things sure. ticked. So, sure. it, um, yeah, so we're just finding little critters, little things that have gone It's not something you'd want to let the rego uh, pass. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. It's, um, yeah, just a lot of things that... It's a pretty, it's a pretty good car. It's just one of those things that, yeah, yeah finding things that have been done uh, yeah. over the years that are, are a bit how you're going, just to right. get by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So, good TLC, get it yeah. back on the road. Correct. Nice one. 